As teaching professionals, we're always looking for ways to improve our practice. And one of the things we can do is really try to embrace that inquiry teaching method by implementing more STEM practices into the work that we're doing in the classroom. Now we talk about STEM practices. What are STEM practices? Well, STEM practices are asking questions, developing models, designing solutions, carrying out investigations, constructing explanations, evaluating results, and redesigning models to investigate. So as you watch this video, look for evidence of these STEM practices. Oftentimes when people think about STEM, they think about building bridges, they think about engineering, and, and one of the areas that they don't always think of is the environmental connection to STEM. So water science gave us a unique opportunity to bring in some of these environmental issues and have the students use a STEM mindset to solve some environmental problems. So one of the problems that we had was, can we filter our water? Um, the first time we did the activity, what we did was we gave the children a stack of materials and we said, okay, here's how you build a stackable filter. Can you filter the water? And the students did a nice job. They knew that they had to build a stackable filter, put holes in the bottoms of the cups, stack the cups up, put something different in every layer throughout, and then pour water through it. And lo and behold, when they finished the activity, they were all thrilled and all patted themselves on the back because they did filter the water and it came out much clearer than it was at the beginning. But as teachers, we sat and we started to talk and we started to think and said, how can we do a better job of bringing more science into this? So what we decided to do was use the earth as a model. We looked at the layers of the earth and we presented the various layers of the earth in a very simple model to the students. And we said to them, can you use the earth as a model or as inspiration to build a stackable filter? and the students did that. And the conversations were wonderful. When we talked about the humus layer being all those tangled up roots and a knotted mess, one of the students said, well, cheesecloth kind of looks like this knotted mess that we have. And they shoved it in a cup and they said, that could be our humus layer. And, and all the way down through the topsoil, the subsoil, the fragmented rock, and, and the bedrock. No, because actually, you can go through this. This is the bedrock. 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 When they finished that activity, they could then say, now we filtered the water, but we filtered it like the earth filters it. And they could describe the infiltration process for the earth. So not only is this activity a great introduction to infiltration, but it's a really nice segue into learning more about the drinking water treatment process. The same technique of filtration and coagulation is used in drinking water treatment. The drinking water treatment process is highly scientific, so we use chemistry, we use math, we use all kinds of technologies, a lot of it is computerized, so it's a really technical career. So students or people that pursue careers in this industry may be working in the lab, doing lab tests, they may be working as an operator, so making process control decisions. These are really important jobs. They're as important as doctors and nurses. They're really at the front line of public health. And there's no greater advance in technology than tr purified drinking water that has benefited our public health across the country. Water is Earth's most valuable resource. There's no alternative to clean water. And this activity is a great way to show students how we clean water through not only infiltration, but also municipal drinking water treatment facilities. 